Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake. Also playing live over SPNN in St. Paul. Got some interesting stories we're talking about tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about a federal judge who's under investigation for improper, uh, improper actions. Uh, the uh, investigatory branch of Congress will be looking into his actions. Uh, also, cameras in the courtroom. Um, we showed last week, I uh, maybe it was two weeks ago, where Andrew Henderson was uh, filming his citation he got. And now there's an update. Now he, he said, I'm not guilty. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, fine was released. But he was found guilty only, no hearing. And he wanted one. Interesting. We're going to show you the follow-up of that. Um, and that gets into the registry of actions, what really takes place, are they being done correctly. Um, the registry of action lets you know about your court case records. Uh, also, then that will tie into the, uh, the Jamil, Jamal Clark shooting. <clears throat> and then we're going to look at uh, judicial elections. And we're going to name the judges that are up for election in the Supreme Court, appellate courts, and then Ramsey County, and next week we'll show the Washington County uh, judges up for, or the 10th Judicial District uh, judges up for election. Um, also a little bit on Matamide Schools and what another state has done to a similar situation of building a school on a dump site. Uh, a state has outlawed that. And then what about uh, bathroom bills, the gender inclusiveness, the gender equity program, how's that going and what's happening uh, around the nation and here in Minnesota relating to that issue. So we got a lot to cover tonight um, and we're going to see what's going to go uh, if we get it all in. Uh, first thing, well we're going to do Matamidi schools. Just found out that Rhode Island is the first state to prohibit school constructions on vapor intrusion brownfield sites. That, my understanding, describes the Matamide uh, school that was built there. And that is uh, a vapor intrusion site. Uh, and uh, my understanding is a brownfield site. So Rhode Island has outlawed those. You can't have a school on those sites. And Matamida has been fighting like crazy. Um, and Senator Wigger has been fighting against this to, just to let you parents know that your kids are, every minute they're in that school, they uh, have these toxic chemicals uh, running around the system and in the air around them. And they don't want you to know that. And they've fought that and they've fighting hard and they're resisting and they're playing hardball with it. But here Rhode Island said, no, you can't do it. So what's going on here? And of course, Matamidi School District, the, and my understanding, the, at the time the mayor of Grant, uh, Tom Carr, the mayor of Matamidi, um, uh, and then Mark Anderson, the school board superintendent, all knew that this school was being built right next to this, uh, this uh, uh, former uh, waste dump site um, called a vapor intrusion brownfield site, which is a toxic, toxic waste dump and has been a Superfund site. So it's interesting that Ro Rhode Island has decided to do that. Uh, okay. Um, then we got this federal judge, and I'm going to go over this real quickly. <laughs> The reason to be able to hold judges accountable, and this has so many twists and turns, and we'll see what comes out of it. It almost ends up being uh, a mute point because this prosecutor, moot, not mute, I heard you. <laughs> uh, it's kind of the same thing. No, I know it's not, but I'm getting harassed from the control room. Um, 
The chief judge of federal district court in Washington, D.C. notified the White House he would retire this week. The same day, a Utah woman filed a lawsuit accusing him of assault and predatory sexual behavior 35 years ago when he was a civil rights prosecutor and she was a 16-year-old eyewitness in a murder case. U.S. District Judge David Roberts acknowledged in a statement that he had an intimate relationship with the woman and that it was a bad lapse in judgment, but his lawyers called their relationship entirely consensual. And this is written by um, Carrie Johnson. And <clears throat> it's, it's interesting to note here, so he's retiring. Uh, Mr. Uh, Jason uh, Chaffetz, uh, he's the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and he's investigating their committees to investigating this to see if they're going to have some type of action. Uh, conducted against the judge, uh, which, okay, what are they going to impeach him? Well, what he has done is he re is retired. And in the meantime, but his, he's only 63, but his retirement is due to a disability, okay? And if you're a federal judge and you retire due to a disability, you have your same income that you, it's as if you were working as a judge. There's no uh, loss of income if you retire due to disability, and it goes throughout the rest of your life. Now, they can't disclose what the disability is uh, because that would violate his health privacy rights. And <clears throat> an, uh, somebody that oversees this has said that the judge, um, it's a legitimate disability, okay? Well, you know, we don't know, we'll never know. And I, I just want to tell you what happens. Uh, you know, I used to sell disability insurance, the state-of-the-art disability. And in the state-of-the-art disability, you would have uh, one of the options was for mental um, problems. Uh, and you can get your disability coverage would pay out. And these companies did, but what happened when there was a loss of a job due to the downturn in the economy, all these people who didn't have any physical disabilities uh, ended up going in and saying they're having a mental disability problem, uh, depression, uh, various other kinds of uh, mental disabilities and so all these insurance companies were having to pay out and they paid out and many went broke uh, because of that. So here we've established in our federal courts that if you have a disability you and it's a for whatever reason and we don't know what it is you get a hundred percent of your payout. You see what what that does is there's no incentive to go and get better. And in all disability policies today, and even back then, the most you can get for your disability coverage was about 60 to 70 percent of your, um, your income. And that would then be an incentive for you to get back to work and, and, and mend. Well, here for judges, you just disable, why get better? You know, why try to get back on the bench? Now, federal judges, it's a lifetime uh, appointment. So it's just interesting to see this twist and turns here. So uh, if he gets impeached, he's already on disability. Uh, who knows what's going to happen to this federal judge? Uh, but, there, but the judge is saying, look, this was consensual. It was wrong to do. It was 35 years ago, and I shouldn't lose my judgeship because of that. And so we'll, we'll see what happens there. It's just uh, interesting uh, twists and turns. And that's what you see happen in, in Minnesota. I mean, when, when there was a hearing on, uh, and these hearings were uh, interested parties uh, about the, the judiciary in Minnesota, uh, relating to accountability 
and that turned into a whole thing about judicial disability and what judges are going to get paid and I took videos of that I have them uh, I got to put them up on YouTube um, but it all wanted to be about disability and how do we make sure these judges get full disability um, uh, from the bench even though they're not serving lifetime appointments and it was just fascinating because the whole thing never really concerned itself. It was about the rules of accountability for the judges. They didn't care about accountability for the judges. They just wanted to make sure they had their disability pay. It was fascinating uh, to see. And then a group of us came in and said, hey, uh, here's some issues of concern we have for these, for our judges, for accountability. We think these rules need to be changed so we have better accountability. And they just could care less. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't even have uh, this discussion. Although there was a couple people interested, um, they were not people from the bench, uh, mostly private people that were, say, on the uh, Board on Judicial Standards that were not attorneys. So, um, all right, let's get into, before we come to our judges and who's running for election, we're going to show video uh, of, we're going to show the video here of Andrew Henderson, who has a web page called um, YouTube uh, forward slash the Drukes. And you'll see a little advertisement there. But just to show you, a couple weeks ago, we showed what he went in and filmed him. He got a citation for parking in a snow emergency place in Minneapolis, in Hennepin County. So he's contesting it because he had no notice, he didn't know, there wasn't very much snow. And so he's contesting it and he got his um, fine canceled. Okay, but we'll see what happens. This video gives a little bit of a snapshot here of what happened last time to refresh us for the new video. So let's watch this. And so, you know, here's a, a brochure, you know, in regards to, you know, snow emergencies in, in, in Minneapolis. Right. And so, it's, you know, it's got, uh, it's got ways to, you know, find out whether or not a snow emergency is declared. Right. I, I mean, I don't spend too much time in Minneapolis. I'm not from here. I'm from Little Canada. <laughs> so, I mean, and... In we, Ramsey County. Yes, and we, and we have signs in Ramsey County. <laughs> in <laughs> just about everywhere I've seen in Ramsey County. I can't think of one place in Ramsey County where there's not a sign. That says what? That says like, like no parking or you know do not or, or snow emergency route or no parking between this hour and this hour this month and this month. Um, there's always signs and there's <laughs> I haven't seen any signs in Minneapolis so you know I had no clue and I don't feel guilty about this because I had, didn't have the knowledge. Um, there's other cars parked there. I mean there's there's no victim to this crime that I can that I can discern. Well, except they're not actually able to plow the even side that people are parked on. Is, is the problem, but. I mean, I talked to the neighbor and asked them if 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 they uh, were were uh, inconvenienced by me parking there in that that tiny bit of snow, and uh, they were not. And so I don't feel that there's a a victim there. For I don't feel there's a crime. And I mean, I just I just don't feel guilty about this. And so I want to want to fight it. Well, you know, as far as you know, the citation goes. I mean, you know, I'm not seeing any other you know parking tickets for you. And, you no, know, so I don't. I'm going to give you a break and cancel yeah. the fine on this one. Yeah, I don't. I don't speed. I don't. They don't yeah, do anything. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Um, I, I'm a pretty legal citizen. I just. Did, I had no clue about this. Um, but uh, but I mean, you know, so as far as you know, snow emergency. I mean, you know, so okay. That, that's, that's how it works. Okay. I keep that in mind now. Thank you for this information. All right, you're all set. Awesome. Have a all good right, day, man. Care. You too. Take care. All right, thanks. Make sure I keep that out. What's up, y'all? No victim, no crime. Don't take the plea. <laughs> okay. So, that's a setup, okay? So, here we have... No victim. Here we have... Uh, is my mic on? Okay. I was hearing the other video come through. I, um, here we have no fine. Okay, so 
now what happens is what's called a registry of action. So anytime you get a speeding ticket, a felony, petty misdemeanor, it goes on your record, you can go look up your court record. Okay, so uh, Andrew Henderson decided to do this and we're going to see what happens here. So let's run the next video uh, when you got it all set up there and um, see what happens. Tell me. Pictures of us. Yeah. Can I get your badge number? 0016. Cool. Is it shiny enough for you? It's very shiny. All sir. right. You need your driver's license, Mr. Fifth Amendment, right? You filming right now? I am. Oh, come. He's got the camera on. He's got the camera on me right now as we're talking. I was here uh, on January 21st and I filed a parking ticket okay. and it was dismissed. Okay. But somehow in the register of actions it says that I pled guilty. Okay. So do you have a copy of that with you? The, the ticket or do you have your ID? I have my ID, okay. yes. So let me see if I can find it. Yeah, the. Uh, the you might have to meet with sure, the guy I talked to, um, he took the ticket when. Oh, okay. You know. Today, so okay. I can't go talk to him. Sure. To have him check. I might just have to have you meet with someone new. Really? Yeah. Because I mean, I, I put a lot of work into fighting that. Sure, I understand. You just need to go in and tell them, and then they'll look at it and take care of whatever. Okay. Um, so. Or, I mean, I can go back and see if someone could look at it without you having to go back. Sure, or, or whatever. I don't really, you know. As long as it gets taken care of properly, that's all I care about, you know. And okay, so you said it was dismissed, but mm -hmm. it's still showing up on the register of actions? As, a, as I pled guilty. What are you doing? Okay, so that wasn't for the snow emergency. Yeah, yeah. It was? Yeah, it was on January, t uh, January 21 at uh, 11, 10 a.m. Does he have a pan fire or what? No, he said um, it got dismissed, but it's showing up. It's still showing up that he's got that. I know for provincial? No. No, it's a snow emergency. Oh, okay. <coughs> so did you look at. That was the sentence. Converted from this accident. Somebody reopened it. I was going to going to Did he? Okay, it shows zero. Did they go on any dying? Was it dismissed? What is G? Oh, that's his initial. Did you go on his position? Guilty, no, they pled him guilty and convicted him and sentenced him to no money. Should I just go back and see if somebody can look at it? I would have somebody look at it. Yeah, because here, here, here's the odd thing about this is that, um, you know, I, I specifically said I want to fight the citation and he canceled the fine. So. Um, I'll go back and see if someone can look at it. You might still have to go back 
in talk to them again just to clear it up. Okay. But I'll see if I can get get it so you don't have to go back. But I, I can't promise it. Sure, sure, that'd be awesome. All right, just a moment. Cool. That's about the time I think that we were kind of switching over from one one computer to another. So there's there could be a possibility that things didn't go right. Sure. I mean, you know, yeah. We're all being trained and yeah. So maybe there is a mistake made there. Mistakes do happen, yeah, you know. We just switched over. Yeah. Was it January or was it February? I don't. Yeah, you know, we just switched over just recently. I mean, we're all human. We all make mistakes, yeah. so. So hopefully that's it. What did she say? Okay, so she said that um, they he dismissed the fees, mm -hmm. but it, but it still shows up on as being a matter with the court, it doesn't go on your driving record right. because it's just a parking ticket, but it's, it will, you know, show up in the register of actions. Or as guilty? Well, she said... Because, um, I mean, I, 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 I said I wanted to fight it quite a few times. With parking tickets, they yep. don't find you at... It's that you accepted responsibility for the ticket, but the fees were dismissed. I didn't, re I didn't even accept responsibility. And, 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 and the interesting about this is I used this, this camera right here to create the uh, accountability and transparency, mm -hmm. and I have it all online and you know out there. So, I mean, you can watch okay. the video, and I specifically said I wanted to fight it and that I was not guilty, I didn't feel guilty. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what, you know, all I can tell you is what mm -hmm. this says, but okay. again, I would encourage you then to come back and talk to someone okay so so that it can be explained or or maybe have them go up to self-help or there's legal advice because okay. i mean i don't know that you know legal advice like upstairs sure. you can tell them exactly what happened and then they could give you they could tell you what they think you should do right but i mean that's that's not their problem it's the problem of of this office here because I specifically said I wanted to fight this. Like I was very adamant about wanting to fight this and about not being guilty. Well, I, so I'm just going to give you a choice. You can mm -hmm. either come back and and they can explain it in greater detail or okay. you can go upstairs. To okay, so just come back a different day or what? Well, no, no, you can oh. come back right, right now. Okay. Yeah, I just... I was trying to oh, get, sure. so you didn't have to come back, but okay. I don't think I got you the answer you're looking for. Yeah. So that's probably the best thing. Did I answer? Did I have stuff? Do you think I want to come before? I don't know. Can you? That was from when I was on live. I just don't think that's going to change anything. I think we're back there, so. I think he's going to have to do a motion to reopen, or, yeah, motion to remove the guilty plea. The one he's going to end up doing. Yeah, do you go by it. Andrew? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, I'll just give you that number. I'll give you because you're behind. Okay. All right. So go ahead and have a seat. Cool. Hi, thank you. So I want to make sure that you're not videotaping us. I actually am. So we remove am. all, all okay. video. It's against the law in our office right okay. now. And that's so what we need. should I just leave then? If you want to leave, you can you leave. To leave, but turn the camera off or leave. That's your choice. That's my choice? That's your okay. choice. Okay, I'll leave. All right, come back without a camera. All right, yep. I, I hope you all fix that up, though, you know. Well, it's the law. I'm going to make a law here in Hamlet County, so. Can you cite the statute? No, it's policy. Yeah. Poli so, okay, so do you think that the policy trumps my First Amendment right to record? I'm not answering no questions from now, and you still need to think. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If I end up on YouTube, I'm going to be upset.
Well, I think the, <laughs> that was fascinating to me. I don't know about what you thought about it, but I thought it was very fascinating. And, and the main reason is um, that, that very end piece, which I couldn't hear in here. I, don't, I hope you heard it out there, but I couldn't hear it in here, uh, was that these are, these are rules by Hennepin County. And, and a very appropriate question to ask is, well, does our Constitution trump your rules? And therefore, you don't get any answer after that. Uh, I mean, things shut down. And that's what you have happening in the courts. Uh, press can't videotape because of rules. Now, if you violate a rule, a court rule, you could be charged with a misdemeanor because it doesn't matter. I mean, that's, that's what the law says according to the rules. And, <laughs> or is that what the rules say according to the rules? Um, and it just doesn't matter what it is. If the court establishes a rule, then they can charge you with a misdemeanor. So, it's, to me, I, I just congratulate Andrew Henderson for showing this process and showing what can happen, and it's a complete process. How many people know that there's a registry of actions that they can look up? You can go on your home computer, and I've showed it in past shows here how to do that. You can go on your home computer and look up registry, look up your past history. And it's not too complicated and not too hard to do. But just see all the trauma that took place. And of course, when he actually goes and talks to somebody again, you know, <laughs> so I would say, I think now maybe Andrew Henderson's uh, reputation precedes him <laughs> for recording these things. But you see the opposition of being recorded that has taken place. Our public servants don't want to be recorded and they will harass you and do whatever it takes to get you not to record and uh, to record them. And I can understand not wanting to be recorded, but you got to understand if you're a public servant, no matter where you work in the legislature, in the executive branch, or judicial branch, we have freedom of the press. And this is about transparency, like uh, Mr. Henderson says. It is very much about transparency and showing people what takes place. And, and here's why it's important. In our Minnesota Constitution, for the purposes of education, it is our public schools have been established in order that we have a well-informed public, in order well-informed student, public in order to preserve a Republican form of government. You need to be well educated. Okay, you need to know what happens around you. You need to know what the rules are, how things work, and how people are treating the rules. And what rules trump other rules? You need to know that in order that you don't go into some other form of government like socialism or communism that destroys your liberties. Okay, and, and basically that's what we're getting right now in our presidential elections. We are getting this uninformed electorate or people who want this socialism or communism and they want their liberties taken away from them. That's a, that's a stupid person, okay? That's an uninformed person. And our education system, in my opinion, is purposely dumbing down the students so that they don't know. And here what you saw on this video is what the courts don't want you to know. They don't want you to know how things work because if you know how things work, then you can do what Andrew Henderson is doing and fight against it and expose it. So we're glad, I'm glad he's doing this. We got a phone call now, so uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Uh, a question and a comment. All right. M Mr. Kinley, could you please tell me the rules that was cited, whether or not that w those were court rules or the Hennepin County rules, because I'm trying to figure out uh, what rules they were saying. I, we, we don't know. I, we do know. I don't know which ones were cited there. It sounded like, according to this video, 
the police officer said it was Hennepin County's rules. But we do know, I do know that Hennepin County or the court has rules that you can't uh, film a legal proceeding. All right. And, it's a rule. Yeah. And it would be interesting to know, like, it didn't seem that was a legal proceeding. It was just trying to get his own information corrected. Right. And did you hear the one lady say um, there that you may need to provide a motion to remove your guilty plea? And that would be a legal proceeding. So I, I think these are all considered uh, legal proceedings are considered officers of the court, uh, even for these citation issues. Now, you, even my question would be as, you know, dealing with one party consent, he could have even had a, a recorder in his pocket, too. Um, right. You know, and if there's a difference between visual and audio recording, I don't know. But I want to tell you about another, this is more of a comment. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm very much aware of Mr. Henderson's activities and yours, and uh -huh. very good for transparency and video. But there's a big Supreme Court case that's going to be heard on Monday. It's called KSTP versus the Metropolitan Council. Okay. This is where Jay Coles, uh, was, as a reporter, was trying to get the videotapes in the in the, in the I think in a bus where the incident happened, and just to show of what was happening. Well, Met Council is basically saying that's personnel data because it was used in the investigation. And it, even though it's like a simple case, it can have a big impact because as we go into like body cameras now right, and dash cams, what, what might happen is someone is accused of something, They'll look at it in a personnel investigation. Well, the Met Council is arguing that forever then becomes private, even though it may have been filmed in a public street or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting dynamic. And again, in the world, as you know so well, videos are becoming the document right. in many situations. Right. And, and it's even in the, with the court cases now. Sometimes it's more electronic or you... You can't get transcripts. They'll tell you, well, <laughs> go listen to it on, uh, uh, you know, the, the the Supreme Court case or whatever right. on, the, on the line. Well, anyways, thank you. Oh, I got a quick question for you. Yep. Uh, did you go to the body camera hearings in the legislature? Well, Anything the happen were, with the that? The bills were polled uh, to yesterday. They were polled? For, for today. Okay. The only hearing, the only body cam hearing uh, was last year before the Senate. And as you know, the House didn't deal with it. And there's some big issues. Right. Uh, very principled issues that e if you read today's paper, you'll see some of the, what some of those issues are. Okay. All right. Thank so you. no hearings on it. All right. Now, there, were, there might be, but who knows, but it's first deadline and... Right. All right. Could go Thank to the you. rules. Thank you. Uh, could go to the rules committee, and the rules committee could bring it back up any time in this process. Uh, so, it, you know, there's a lot of ways to move in and out of this system, but it's missed the first deadline here if there's not a hearing tomorrow, I believe, on the body cameras, uh, which I will try to tie in here. So that's a very big case, this KSTB versus Met Council. Uh, KSTP wanted a um, video of an ev some type of event that took place on, I, I'm assuming, a bus, a uh, public transportation bus. So that will be very, very interesting. We will follow that. Uh, it's, it's critical uh, information for, for your liberties. And... I mean, this is a government employee, a bus driver, government employee. So why, why shouldn't it be released? Because it does affect people. Ah, uh, wow, interesting. Now, the, the video aspect, um, 
Well, we get back to the Andrew Anderson video. There's a thing that registry of actions. Um, I've actually been doing some research through the registry of actions, looking for uh, felons who have voted. Um, and because if you're a felon and on parole, you don't get to vote. And so far I've, in Ramsey County, I've found about 20 felons that have voted, that from what I can tell. Uh, and so there's, there's more to go. I haven't looked at all of them, but say out of about 120, there's 15 to 20 felons that have voted <clears throat> in Ramsey County. That's definitely significant enough to have an outcome in a, um, an election. So <laughs> it's just fascinating. And these register of actions are unbelievable. Uh, in, in one sense, you don't really know what took place. And, and you look at Andrew Henderson here where he pleads not guilty and he wants a hearing and the fine goes away and he, he gets a guilty thing showing up. So uh, it's just a fascinating process. Okay, um, and that, I want to tie the video into a little bit into the Jamal Clark case. I have not been following that case except for one aspect that I did hear about is that when police officers... Jamar. Jamar, I'm sorry, thank you, Jamar Clark. When police officers turn on their sirens and have their, or turn on their flashing lights, the cameras automatically go on. So you have a situation where officers are now not, turn, are not turning on their lights and turning on their sirens when they're coming up as backup. Okay, because they don't want to record, well, we don't know why. Okay, the assumption is they don't want to record what's taking place. And in this case, that took, that's what happened. An officer showed up in his vehicle, and so the, the video wasn't done and the audio wasn't done that could have recorded the event in the shooting. So, you know, just interesting stuff uh, going on there. All right. Let's go to um, graphic number 11. We got judicial elections coming up, and most people don't pay attention to it, don't know what to do. So I'm giving you a heads up. Judges will be elected this next year and there will be primaries and there will be a general election. And so here's our Supreme Court Justice Natalie Hudson. She's up for election this year and she's been appointed by Dayton. And so she was sitting on the appellate court. Now Dayton has appointed her within the last year to the Supreme Court and because of our Constitution she now has to uh, run for that office run for election. Um, it's my understanding that she will have at least one, if not two more challengers. There's another man uh, for that seat, so it will be a contested election. Natalie Hudson will get the words incumbent behind her name, okay, which no other election in our state gets that, only judges. Why is that? Nobody else does. Why does she get it? Now, I think that's, I don't, I don't think that's right. I shouldn't say she. Why does any in judge, sitting judge, get that word incumbent? She has not been elected to the Minnesota Supreme Court. She's been appointed, okay? So she's not an elected incumbent. She's an appointed person running for her first election in the Supreme Court. Christopher Dietzen, who's also a Supreme Court Justice, decided to retire October 31st, who was appointed by Polanyi to that, uh, Governor Tim Polanyi to that pos position, and now Governor Dayton gets to appoint a Chief Justice to that, or uh, a Justice to that seat. You know, it's kind of like stabbing the Republicans in the back, you know. He should have left it open for an election so it could have been a contested seat. There's one 
reason why I think he did, you know, there's a number of reasons. One, he, he probably doesn't want judicial elections. He wants to elite people to um, uh, decide rather than, uh, or establishment people to decide rather than uh, the people deciding. Uh, but the other reason, and probably the more prominent one, I think, is that if he would have left the seat open, you probably would have had, like in Washington County, uh, when there was an open seat, probably had uh, a good four to 12 people running for that seat. And it would show that people do, and there's attorneys out there do, do want to be on the Supreme Court. And they don't, and certain people don't want to see that happen. Okay? And that they'll run. Attorneys will run for these positions if there's not somebody that's an incumbent. And you talk to these attorneys. I talk to all these a lot of these attorneys running for office or not running. And that running against that incumbent is is something that they weigh very seriously. Okay, so now let's go look at the appellate court uh, justices. There are 19 appellate court justices. Okay, and let's put this on a black background if we can instead of, I don't think it will look good on the screen here. Uh, this would be graphic number 12. Okay, uh, even better. A blue background. <laughs> appellate court judges. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine justices, nine out of 19, are up for election. And so Randall Peterson, he was appointed by Perpich to that and then subsequently ran uh, in one elections. Heidi Shellhaus by Pawlenty, Francis Connolly by Pawlenty, Matthew E. Johnson by Pawlenty, Michelle Ann Larkin by Pawlenty. You see all these Pawlenty uh, appointees. And there may be a mistyping on uh, Luis Dovre uh, Bjorkman. Uh, and I want you to notice uh, then Denise D. Riley as a Dayton appointee. And then Peter M. Uh, I'm going to say this wrong. Reyes, a junior, Dayton appointee, just done. So he's up for election because he was just appointed within the last two years. Okay, and there may be, uh, Denise may be also in that situation, I don't know. Uh, so now the chief judge, Judge Cleary, also is pulling out of his seat October 31st. And that seat will now go to an appointment by Dayton. And so instead of saying, hey, uh, I'm not running for re-election and leaving the seat open for an election. He's just saying, Phew. now, he's just saying, I want the governor to appoint. Now, here, here's another thing that's happening behind these appointment uh, situations. It is well known inside the judiciary that if you leave a seat open for an election, you will probably not get a retirement judgeship. In other words, or be a star judge, a judge with all this experience, though you can come in and when there's uh, vacations, when there's uh, certain serious cases and you have all this experience, you can come back and try those cases as a retired judge. Uh, and if you leave it open for an election, you're not going to get those appointments. Uh, so, now that's at the appellate court. Now understand, a lot of these judges will not have opponents. I'm going to venture to say that all the Palenti appointees in this election will have uh, people running against them uh, for judgeship. You know, because the, the Democrats have this underground system of endorsement. It's, you know, Planned Parenthood, it's the unions, uh, it's the various trades. They, they can endorse anybody, you know. Now, of course, Republicans and Democrats can endorse too. Um, but the, the judiciary and the legal end, the, the lawyer end, the lawyer profession is out there really trying to 
put a, a spin on the political parties to know these judges have to be elected. And if you're a political party that's going to uh, endorse a judge, uh, you're incompetent. You're, you know, we don't want this to happen. And, and they will sue you and they will call you bad names and deride you for trying to have transparency in our judicial elections so people actually know who's the judge. These judges hold a lot more sway over more people's lives and we know very, very, very little about them. You know, we know more about the president than we know about our judges. We know about more about mayors, but they don't have the impact a judge will have over your life. And you need to know about them. You need to know their character, what they're about. And there's some judges we have in Minnesota that are very, very bad characters. Okay, And there's a whole group of people trying to expose these characters, but our rookie league legislature is afraid of them. And the judges have essentially established this cult where you can't say anything bad about them. That's even in the rules. Lawyers can't say anything bad about the judiciary. So, I mean, that's, that's a cult-like tactic. And, I, and that's what I think our judiciary is, is, is they are a cult. So anyway, almost half, well, more than half of the appellate court could be replaced this year. And I hope there's a challenge. And if you want to run against these judges, if you're an attorney who wants to run for appellate court, let me know. And we'll get you signed up and get you going and let you know the process and what needs to take place. Uh, I'm one of the persons to contact. Not that you can't do it. You can do it on your own and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't know, you know, email me at... Uh, at my email address that's not up there right now, <laughs> but it will be later. You'll see it later. Let's go to the next graphic, graphic number 13. This is the second judicial district, and I'm sorry I didn't put that up there. This is Ramsey County. It's the second judicial district. Now, and there's, I, I believe, 28 judges in Ramsey County, the second judicial district. Again, that's Ramsey County. And we have 1, 2, 3, 12 we got 12 judges out of 28 running for election this year. Now, let's look at uh, John Guthman, Plenty Appointee, Jennifer Frisch, Dayton, Thomas Gilligan, Dayton, Sarah Grewing, just appointed in 2015. So she's up for her first election. David Higgs by Ventura. Mark Ireland was elected. There was actually an election. Uh, I believe in that there was three to four people that ran for that seat. And Mark Ireland ended up winning that. Uh, Richard Kyle, uh, Dayton appointee. William Leary, a Ventura appointee. In my mind, one of the most corrupt judges in Minnesota. Uh, despicable person, in my opinion. Uh, Roseanne. Nathanson Venture, Nicole Starr, appointed by Dayton in 2015, so she has to come up. This would be her first election. George Stephenson Ventura and Judith, Judith Tilson, who has been on a show that's produced out of these studios, uh, she was elected. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know what I would like to see one day? Is every name up there would have elected. So I hope you had your recordings, your VCR recorded, so you get all those names. Uh, but what you do need to know, in case you missed it, you weren't recording the show, you can go to, let's get my graphic up there, uh, YouTube and watch this show again. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash speechless MN. And uh, if you want information about running for judge, speechlessmn at gmail.com. We'll get you in contact with the people and let you know the process that, that it takes to get you, get you there. Um, let's see. There is... Um, yeah, tw 12 out of 28, so a good oh, over 30, 33% um, of the justices 
in Ramsey County up for election. So next week we'll go and look at uh, the 10th Judicial District, which covers Washington County, uh, Anoka, and various other districts, and see how many people are up for judge. Okay, the point I was going to make, judges who are running for office have to register uh, at the same time every other person running for office. There's a two-week period in May, and go to the Secretary of State's website. In, at the end of May, beginning of June, you're going to find out all about the judges who are running for office, uh, that, or at least who put their name in, and usually there will be a website. There will be information attached to that judge so that you can find out uh, more about them. Okay, with our time remaining, I wanted to talk about the safe Oh, I wanted to give an update uh, on what's happening in our public schools regarding gender inclusiveness and gender uh, equity. In January of this year, St. Paul Nova Classical Academy Charter School was threatened with a lawsuit if they did not adopt the St. Paul School District policy and teach young students K through 5 to accept and affirm gender confusion. Okay, which is the appropriate way to talk about gender equity, gender inclusiveness. The school board is signaling it will comply, and to date, enrollment there has dropped by at least 42 students. So if you're in St. Paul schools, and St. Paul has been losing students. You know, they, they set their budget saying, hey, we're going to have, you know, a lot more students because of our marketing and we're such a great school. And um, now people are leaving in droves. They're not even reaching their goals. As a matter of fact, they're going backwards. They're losing students uh, citywide, or school district wide. And the violence that's been taking place, the discipline policies of St. Paul Public Schools has finally come to light and is being uh, talked about in the press. And it is hurting the schools. And of course, Sil Superintendent Silva should step down. Uh, she has promoted this disaster. She's also promoting this disaster of every kid at the same grade level learns the same thing every day no matter what school you're in. So if you go from one school to the next, you're picking up on the same material. That's not teaching. That's, that's that uninformed, uneducated education that our Minnesota Constitution is speaking against because although we're at equal rights, we're not all equal. Some people are smarter than others. Some people learn faster than others. Okay? And you don't hold people back and you don't and, and you let them move ahead. And at the same time you don't push people back. Okay? And you don't treat people that are getting the same as somebody that has gotten it. Okay, so let the teachers teach. All right, so uh, let's see. Also, New London Spicer School District proposed a transgender policy that defines sex not as a biological fact but as something assigned to the child at birth. It defines gender as one's feelings and identity. It proposes social integration of gender nonconforming students and allows students to use the locker rooms and bathrooms of their gender identity. It commits to encourage and accommodating a student's gender confusion without informing the child's parents. Gender nonconforming means continually changing genders, being neither gender, being neither gender, being both genders, or being no gender at all. Okay? This is, this is foolishness. This is silliness. Uh, anyway, that's what's happening in New London Spicer. In the public arena, the city council of southern Minnesota town of Blue Earth is trying to deal with a man entering the woman's locker room at City's Pool claiming he is a woman. And in West St. Paul, the West St. Paul YMCA is allowing men into the women's showers. I assume that there's going to be a lot more men uh, signing up for the West St. Paul YMCA and the woman will be leaving. 
We could list, uh, there's a whole bunch of other examples in Minnesota. Now, what happened in Houston, Texas, if you remember, there was a number of, uh, there was laws changed. Um, the Houston City Council passed an ordinance in May 2014 forcing every business to allow transgender people to use the facilities of the opposite sex. The public was outraged about this and lost, launched an opposition and in November 2015, a referendum, the ordinance was defeated by more than 60% of the voters in a very liberal city. And so this is the type of thing that's coming here. And a couple things you need to know about transgender youth. 70 to 80% of transgender youth lose transgender feelings. And when young people who identified as transgender did not take medical or surgical treatment, 70 or 80% of them spontaneously lost those feelings. Okay, so this is, I mean, we got a problem. And we're gonna lose our liberties. We're gonna force to believe things we don't wanna believe and, and support that type of behavior when we're against it. All right, well, show's done for this week. Remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week.